Greetings, everyone. Today has been a mighty stressful day, but we're going to de-stress with a little rolling rambles. Right after this rig pulls right out in front of me. <sighs> Today I want to tell you about a long, long time ago, back when I was around 18 or 19, I did some temp work where I did computer stuff. Um, obviously, at 18, nobody's hiring me to be some sort of server administrator. But I was hired to do basic break-fix technician type stuff. Really not terribly complicated stuff. And uh, the other guy I worked with was in his early 20s. So obviously this is not a job that required some sort of amazing genius computer skill. <clears throat> and to be fair, at 18, I didn't know how to program in C. Um, there were a lot of computer skills I didn't have that I have now. So I was much earlier on in my development. I didn't have access to resources when I was younger. Um, in fact, every computer I ever owned was old. Um, even the Commodore 64, by the time I got to actually play video games on it, I was like three or four, I think. And um, yeah, at three or four, it's a little iffy. Um, I learned how to type load, blah, 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 you know, the commands to get a game to go. But that's about it. While I was able to minimally operate that computer, um, the problem is that it, it wasn't exactly state of the art. Although, to be fair, um, we are talking like the mid to late 80s. So the Commodore 64 was still selling, but we were right at the cusp of the Amiga and 16-bit everything taking over all over the place. Technically, IBM PCs had been 16-bit for quite some time, but um, just to be clear, a long time ago in a, in a galaxy not so far away, IBM PCs, um, they came with the 8086 processor, which was 16-bit, which means that the processor can process 16 bits. But the PCXT, is what really made its way into homes. Now, the problem with the PC XT is that it's 16 bits, but the data bus is 8 bits. So it does not retrieve 16 bits from RAM. RAM is not 16 bits wide, it's 8 bits wide. When you have an 8 bit bus, to retrieve a 16 bit value, you have to perform two fetches, which effectively means that all bus accesses were half speed. Um, assuming that 16-bit stuff was even necessary, but it made it easier to interface with external peripherals to have an 8-bit data bus, because at the time, a lot of peripherals were, in fact, 8-bit um, data bus. So, yeah, you get the idea. But that's sort of tangential to the point. The point is, I didn't have a PCXT when I was, like, four. I had access to a Commodore 64, a computer from... God, when was the Commodore from? I feel like a moron. Like, I know the Vic 20s from the late 70s, which I eventually got my hands on one of those too, but the Commodore 64, I think, dates back to 81 or 82. In any case, the Commodore 64 is um, was released before I was born. And so it was like, I don't know, five years old. I have no idea. Um, I can't do math. But it, it was several years old whenever I was born, and or whenever I... Uh, got my hands on one, and <clears throat> that was the newest computer I had for a long time, actually. I did not get access to any other computers for a long time. The next machine I got was uh, when I was... Ooh, I gotta think. Oh my god, I actually do have to think about this. Was I, was I like 11? And guess what? The machine I got when I was 11 was an IBM PCXT clone 8086 640 kilobytes of ram two five and a quarter floppy drives but just think about that for a second two five and a quarter floppy drives <laughs> there was no hard drive we're we're getting up into the 90s and no hard drive yet i'm running dos 3.3 ms dos 3.3 the only editor available is edlin the worst editor um which, frankly, it's easier to type copy con whatever the name is dot bat and then just type out the batch file than it is to go into Edlin and edit it that way. So, yeah, um, but 
I guess what I'm trying to say is I've always had old equipment. So I've always been behind the times due to my lack of resources. <clears throat> I had a 386 when I was in high school. Uh, later got a 486 and then a Pentium. But I got the Pentium when the Pentium 3 was the thing and it wasn't exactly a great Pentium, but it was still better than nothing. I didn't get a new computer for myself until almost the mid 2000s. I built a machine, I think in 2003 or so, that had an AMD Duron in it. I, I don't remember all the, all the details, but because I didn't have all, access to many resources, I didn't really know a lot. So Windows 3.1 and 95 were the extent of my knowledge for a long time. And of course, 98 when it came out, of course, I, I, that's basically 95, let's just be honest. So here I am, it's like, I don't know, 02, 03, whatever. Um, I'm like 18, 19, I don't know. <clears throat> it's in that general time frame. And I don't know a lot, but I do know the ins and outs of Windows 95 and 98 really, really well. And the place I'm working, even though XP has come out, is still on 98, of course. Now, I figured out that on 98, there are a lot of information files or INF files that um, when you double click or right click or whatever, you can install them and they perform actions as specified in the file. Um, and that this is commonly used to install drivers or even some certain pieces of software. And I guess it dates all the way back to Windows 3.1, but this information file format, I may be wrong on that by the way, this information file format is generally used to install drivers, but it can do pretty much anything um, that a driver needs to do on a basic level, like file copies, run a program, rename things. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that can be done in a, an information file. At some point later in that temp job, there came a time where they were deploying a bunch of changes. This place had several offices several small offices scattered all throughout the Triangle region of North Carolina. They needed to roll out these changes to the various offices and it was a whole lot of manual labor. On a um, disc, we would put the installer for Symantec Antivirus Corporate Edition, a couple of other things that had to be run and there were a whole bunch of tweaks that I had to do. Um, I don't remember the details at this point, but the bottom line is there were a lot of little things to do. Now back in the Windows 95, 98 era, and yes, some machines were still on 95 instead of 98, we actually had uh, not, not nearly as much of the nice stuff that we have in the Windows NT 2000 XP era when it comes to batch files. So batch files largely were still whatever you would normally get on DOS, which was a much more restrictive set of options and commands and whatnot. And uh, I just, I didn't know everything about how all the little things that you could or couldn't do. Um, even though I had a lot of knowledge, I didn't know everything. I don't even know if 95 and 98 had the reg command from the command line where you can modify values in the registry just using a reg command and not have to load a registry file to do it. But to give you an idea of what I did when I was 18, 19, you know, the kind of things that I could do, I was able to take an information file and I recognized that when you run install on an information file, it performs actions that are listed underneath a certain information section. And I could largely take an existing driver file and edit it. When I realized I could take a driver file, a driver information file, and just edit it and have it do certain operations in the registry and run certain programs, I just took a dummy file and I edited it and took out all the install drivers, blah, 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 and just replaced the source files with the files I wanted it to copy, the directories, um, the various sections that would copy files to directories. I just put the files that I wanted and the paths that I wanted I basically made the information file format into a certain uh, special kind of batch file. Because back in the 9X days, Windows could not, it, it was basically a giant magical DOS shell. So you still largely were working with DOS commands, 
which meant that some things just could not be done from a batch file the way that they were in other places in Windows. But they could be done in an information file relatively quickly and compactly. So knowing that, um, I was able to manipulate this batch or this information file into a sort of batch file for my own purposes. And because I was able to figure out what needed to be changed in the registry or what files needed to be changed or whatever, uh, what programs needed to be executed, I was able to create a floppy disk where all of the stuff that needed to be done was on that disk. Every installer, every file to copy, and have the information file. We just go to a computer, pop in the floppy, open it in Explorer, right click the information file and hit install. And my floppy would just do everything for us. It would do everything for us immediately. I guess there's not a huge point to this other than that even when I was a, a late teen, I was able to figure enough things out to get things done and I saved I think I timed it and it took somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes per computer, usually closer to 60, to complete all of the processes. And if we just did it from this information file I set up, um, we made several disks, went to, each, went to each computer and ran install, and all the computers could be installing and or rather running all of these operations in parallel instead of in series. And with us babysitting the entire thing, having to, you know, do the next one, do the next one, do the next one, and so on. And I, I don't remember how many computers there were, but in the end, I, there probably were at least 20 that we had to do that to, if not a lot more. So I would say I saved them a minimum of 20 hours, um, and a part-time week of labor um, on those computers. And of course, I got paid nothing extra for it, because that's just the way things go especially when you're 18 and you don't know to ask for things like that. And I probably wouldn't get it anyway. It was, it was a temporary job. I was actually there longer than I was supposed to be because I was useful to them. But um, they kept me on for like a year and a half. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it ended one day and that was just it. They couldn't keep me on anymore. I was temp too long. And, uh, and, and I'll just, I'll never forget that I was able, even with the limited knowledge that I had, to notice that there was a different way to perform these operations. And because most of what we were doing was installing drivers, so I was accidentally opening information files and looking through them all the time. And that's how I deciphered the format, figured out what these things were doing, um, and then I made it do what I wanted. But e even in my limited capacity, I was able to make that do what was needed and save a lot of labor doing so. Now, things are very different today, and if I wanted to do all the stuff that, that was required back then, I would probably would just install or uh, make a batch file. Or um, if I was desperate and I wanted to learn PowerShell, because I don't like PowerShell, so I just don't bother learning it, I guess I can make a stupid PowerShell script, but whatever. Um, I actually really hate PowerShell. I think it's way too verbose. And a lot of the ideas in PowerShell seem good from a distance. Like if someone talks about them, they seem really good. But PowerShell seems like a massive pain in the butt. Um, it seems like the problem is they have these other object models in Windows that don't fit the everything is, is, a, um, is text idea that sort of got inherited from CPM and Unix and... Uh, that Linux adheres to, Mac OS adheres to, usually, except for those stupid plist files. But because Windows has all these different object models available, PowerShell makes it easier to manipulate them, I suppose. But every time I look at a PowerShell script, I just sort of gloss over and go, why is this so difficult? Why do they make this so verbose and so obnoxious? And it's just, it's just not worth my time to even bother learning it, especially when if I want to do something more complicated than what I do in command prompt, I can install msys2 and a mingw development environment with all the fixins, you know, and then I've got grep and sed and all my Unix tools or whatever right there in Windows. And I can just write shell scripts, which are clearly superior for the task, over PowerShell. So screw PowerShell. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I didn't want to go off on that tangent, but here we are. That's, that's a story of how, in my youth, I managed to 
make the best of what I could do, what I was limited in, but still was able to figure out, uh, and, and use my skills to reduce manpower uh, requirements for a job. To roll out a roll out faster, more reliably, more efficiently, whatever you want to call it. Insert marketing buzzwords here, but I got it done. And I was actually really, really proud of it because you can imagine, like, that's the kind of thing that some, like, mid-20s programmer out of college, they figure out how to save 20 hours worth of work. That's the kind of thing that they would gloat about. And here I was in my late teens at my first job. What, you know, and, I, and I'm like, hey, look, I, I managed to save all this work and uh, I'm, just a, I'm just a noob who doesn't even know what the hell he's doing. It, it's the kind of thing that you never really forget and that never really leaves you. Anyway, enough of me gloating. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. I just realized the camera's wobbling, and it's wobbling a lot, too. It's, it's not a small wobble, it's pretty bad. Jesus. I hope you can see me, because the camera's shaking like crazy. Oh well, this ramble will be wiggly. So be it.